Okay, team, let's continue our journey on doing encoding questions and look at another scenario. Here, we're going to look at a spelling uh, assessment. Uh, this is a, whenever you see spelling assessments, remember, spelling assessments in phonics, it's an orthographic mapping question or an encoding question. Usually, the, the teacher is dictating the words or saying the words, and then the students is using their letter sound correspondence stuff to match up those sounds with gra uh, spelling patterns. And this can be used, this type of spelling test can be used to identify phonics patterns the student doesn't know. And then this could be used to clarify not only their, 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 the phonics patterns that they don't know to help with uh, spelling and encoding, but also help them with decoding. So remember, decoding and encoding support each other. Decoding supports encoding, encoding supports decoding. When you do an encoding or spelling activity, you can identify phonics patterns that need to be clarified it will help with the encoding and it will help them with their decoding of these same words they're getting wrong in the spelling test. All right. Now, this type of assessment, there were two done. There was one done in the beginning of the year and one in the middle of the year. So these are informal assessments that are used to gather information, to guide instruction. And, and, and the double assessments are used to monitor student progression. So let's see how they did here. Everyone, uh, you may want to pause real quick, take a minute, and just analyze what you see. Take a minute, and then uh, we'll talk. And let's talk. Okay. Um, so we see here a CVC word, right? And it looks like they got this right. Good job. Okay, here we have a, a controlled R word, and it looks like they got that wrong. Here they're getting that, that controlled R rule wrong in the beginning of the year. Uh, drive is uh, definitely a, uh, they're getting it wrong, and uh, it is that vowel consonant E, the magic E, right? Or silent E. Okay, peach, okay, they're, they're getting this one wrong here, and, and it, that actually is a vowel pair, right? So there looks like they're getting some type of, or let's do a vowel diagraph. That's a vowel diagraph, right? Two vowels that make one sound in peach. Okay. Uh, how about turn, tar? Oh, oh, they're getting that one wrong too. So they're having a bad day, right? And that is a R, R control. So look, we have two R controls so far. The, the R in star and the the R in star and the er in turn, right? So definitely that is something we got to take a very close, keep an eye on. How about join? Oh, they, they get it wrong. And this is a what? That oi is a what? That's a diphthong, right? That's a diphthong. So looks like this student is having difficulty with a bunch of things in the beginning of the year. R control, met silent E, uh, vowel diagraphs, and diphthongs. Okay, now how do they do um, um, as they go through in the middle of the year? Oh, look, well, they still get this right. That's good. Uh, oh, they fixed, they, they fixed this, they fixed it, fixed it, they got it. They got the controlled R, that's awesome, wonderful news. Oh, look, they got the silent E, they fixed it, fixed, fixed. So if we're just looking at what they corrected, we could say, hey, the student had a lot of progress in controlled R, and they had some progress in silent E using the vowel consonant uh, silent E. But they still, unfortunately, sadly, are having difficulty with those vowel digraphs and those diphthongs. Okay, do you agree? Now, look, if you're doing this for the first time, what you're just trying to do with me is just identify what they got right and what they got wrong and use the right term. And for new teachers doing this, that's the goal, is to see that this is a controlled R word that they got wrong uh, and then they fixed. That's the goal. And this is a, a silent E or, or silent E, magic E, uh, VCE pattern, and they fixed it. That's all I want you to do. So that on the day of the test, when you have questions like this, you can nail it. Everyone take uh, two minutes and read this question. Go. And unpause. Let me write down two minutes there. That's the goal with this one right here. If you go back and redo it. 
first grade, as we get to first grade, the phonics gets more and more advanced. Second grade gets more and more advanced. <coughs> um, you know, this is from the uh, 190 test, this question. There's actually an earlier version of this question uh, that has uh, from the 90 test. And this 90 version of this question is the exact same, but it actually uses uh, second grade. Dun, 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 dun. Second, it uses second grade. In fact, let me see if I can find that one. Okay, this is the new test, right? Okay, and the new test, the 190, uses first grade. And this is the old test from the 90. Same thing, same question. And look at that. Second grade. Hmm. Now, this test here came out in 2014. It was written in 2012, 2013. Let's say 2000. And, let's just make it 10 years. 2013, right? 2012, 2013. It was written then. It was actually written a lot earlier than then. But, you know, okay, so, so around this time here, they were saying this scenario is for second grade, right? <clears throat> and then, guess what? Um, uh, tw 10 years later, oh, we got to come up with a new question. Oh, what do we do? We don't have time. I don't know. Uh, change the grade. Okay, fine. <laughs> they swapped out the grade. So if you don't believe me, take a moment, pause the video, read the old question, pause. The new question, they're the same, except the grade. So you see how they like to recycle? Can everyone see that they're recycling questions? Which means um, when I say, hey, you may want to go back and, and look at some of these older exams. Oh, no, Chris, that's an old exam. That was, that was when you had hair. <coughs> no, 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 not true. I was bald. I was bald back then. <coughs> I've been bald for a very long time. <coughs> oh, probably longer than you're, probably longer than you've been born. Okay. No, it's not that. Okay. I'm telling you that they recycle questions. So old questions from 10 years ago can become new questions today. All right. All right. So I've made my point on that. Okay. Let's go back to the actual slide that we were looking at originally. Okay. So make sure you study these exams because they find a way to trickle back in and you might find them very helpful. Okay, here we go. A first grade teacher periodically administers spelling surveys. Okay, you see spelling surveys, you should be thinking about a spelling assessment or an encoding assessment or orthographic mapping assessment to help students, to, to help assess students' phonics knowledge. The following table shows one student's performance on a spelling survey midway through the year and again, two months later. Okay, so they changed some elements here. This is sort of, but com when you compare it to the older uh, 190 test, there's some elements that are a little bit different. Like this is, uh, uh, there's some elements that are different, but but overall it's the same, and except that this is first grade and the old 190 was second grade. But um, it still is matching up, looking at this and, and, and looking to see, you know, uh, comparing these two different versions of this assessment. And it says here, the student's performance on the second assessment of the spelling survey indicates the student has progressed with which of the following aspects of which of the following phonics elements. Okay, so where did they get better in phonics? Well, we spotted that there was improvement on these ones here, right? And we said that was um, controlled R. And we said that that was magic E, is that right? We spotted that when we did our analysis. Yes, they fixed the controlled R's like in R and star and er and turn, and they, they fixed the uh, silent E in, uh, in the, the VCE word in drive. <coughs> so we could say there was improvement here. So where is the improvement? Well, the answer here would be with um, silent E and controlled R. Look at that <clears throat> team. This is a vocab that you'd want to use. So if we say silent E, we could say silent E and then parentheses, right? We could do like vowel consonant E. And then our control vowels, we could do parentheses vowel R, right? That would be awesome. 
you would really, if you're doing this in an essay, you could point that out. Or imagine this, you're writing an essay and you're like, the student has difficulty with silent E and controlled R vowels. Here are some examples. The grader would flip if you were able to point out that the student messed up on some words like uh, drive and star and turn. They'd be like, oh my goodness, they knew that that was silent E. They knew that that was controlled R vowels. They'd love it, right? Are you hearing me? So get some of this. These are good questions because it helps you give the vocabulary to put in your essays. Um, they did not fix uh, diphthongs. They weren't able to fix that diphthong, right? They um, did not have, they were able to do very, they did very well in final consonant, final, initial and final consonants. They did, they did very well in that on both assessments. So that was never the issue, right? Um, and I don't think there was an issue on blends either. They did just fine on blends. They got the blend here. They, I mean, there was only like, they got the blend here. So there wasn't really an issue with blends. So that's out, right? Uh, and it wasn't really an issue on constant diagraphs because it looks like they, they, it looks like they kind of got that constant diagraph, right? Okay. All right. You seeing what I'm doing here? Uh, we are analyzing these questions, not only to get to the right answer D, but we're practicing these basic skills of being able to look at an assessment, spot what's right, spot what's wrong. And in doing that practice, that training, we're getting exposure to all these, uh, all this vocab, right? So that two things, we can spot the right answer on the day of the test. And two, we can use some of this vocab in our essays because you're going to have to write about this stuff in your essay. And phonics is one of those areas that, you know, almost always the student has gaps in phonics on these assessments, okay? So they're a great one to practice, okay? All right, all right, uh, let's continue, all right, let's go.